Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes and take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Where do you feel the breathing in your body? Especially when the breath is long, you feel it down in the chest, in the torso, in the stomach. But whenever it's clearest, focus your attention right there. And then ask yourself if long breathing is comfortable. If it feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. Try shorter breathing, or in short, out long, in long, out short. Fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. See what kind of breathing feels best for you right now. If you find something that feels good, stick with it. If after a while it doesn't feel so good anymore, you can change. and allow the mind to settle down with the breath. It doesn't have to think about anything else. If other thoughts do come into the mind, you, you can ignore them. They can come and they can also go. You don't have to follow them. You don't have to welcome them in, and you don't have to follow them out. Just think of your thoughts as being like clouds going across the sky. There's nothing to catch the clouds. You don't catch the thoughts, and you can stay right here. If your mind is like sails on a sailboat, the breeze comes and the boat goes wherever the breeze goes. So take down your sails. Let the wind blow right through. But you stay right here, because you're trying to develop a special quality of the mind. The mind when it's still, at ease, solidly here in the present moment. Because when it's here, it can observe itself. If you go running off after thoughts, you know about the thoughts, but you don't know about yourself. Yet, as the Buddha says, it's because of the mind that there's suffering in the world. Because because of the way the mind processes things. Sometimes things can be perfectly fine outside, and yet the mind can make itself miserable. But it can also develop a skill that no matter what things are like outside, it can be fine. What this skill requires, though, is that you develop your inner resources. And the Buddha highlights three things inside that you can have some control over, and that will determine whether you're going to suffer over things or not suffer. And the first is the breath. We breathe every day, every day. And for the most part, we let the breath come in and out on its own. And this will start breathing in ignorance, and that leads to a sense of dis-ease in the body or can lead to dis-ease in the body. You're not paying much attention to it, you start getting very tense, very tight. And then when the body feels tense and tight, then the mind is put into a bad mood. So here's a really simple way of putting yourself back in a good mood. Learn how to breathe in a way that feels refreshing to the body. Think of the whole body breathing. Because the breath is not just the air coming in and out of the lungs. It's also the energy flowing through the blood vessels through the nerves, and those extend throughout the whole body, down to the tips of the fingers, down to the tips of the toes, in front, in back, all around. So think of every cell in your body breathing in, breathing out, with a sense of ease, sense of well-being. That's the first element. The Buddha calls these things fabrications, sankara. They're things that you can put together. You're not just stuck with the way they are. There are potentials that you can develop. The next potential is verbal fabrication, the way you talk to yourself. Like right now, you're talking to yourself about the breath. 
you find yourself talking about something else, bring your conversation back to the breath. How does the breath feel? Where do you feel it? Where do you not feel it? Where is it comfortable? Once it feels comfortable in one spot, try to protect that spot so it stays comfortable all the way in through the in-breath, all the way out through the out-breath and in between. You don't have to squeeze it to get the breath out. You don't have to pull on it to get the breath in. You don't have to squeeze it to mark the line, boundary line between the in-breath and the out-breath. Just let everything flow open and wide easily. So talk to yourself about that. How do you do that? And then once you've got that sense of well-being continuous, then you can think of it spreading. You can have a picture in your mind of where the body is right now, and where the breath is flowing in the body, and where it's flowing easily and where it's not flowing easily. This is getting us into the, the third fabrication, which the Buddha calls mental fabrication. Basically your perceptions and your feelings. Perceptions are the images you have in the mind, or individual words you have in the mind to say, this is this, or that is that. With verbal fabrication, you're thinking in full sentences. With mental fabrication, the perceptions are just single words or images. And then there are feelings. And here we're trying to develop that sense of ease in the body. Let it spread into the mind. So the mind feels at ease as well. And there you are. You've got the three kinds of things that go into affecting your emotions. The way you breathe, that's bodily fabrication. The way you talk to yourself, that's verbal fabrication. And then the perceptions and feelings, that's are mental fabrications. When you're with a breath like this, it's very easy to see them all clearly. And then it's based on these three fabrications that we act. It's because we breathe that we can move the body. It's because we talk to ourselves that we can then speak in the world outside. It's because we have perceptions and feelings that the mind can think. So all of our actions come out of these three things. Once you've got these three things clear in your mind, then you begin to notice how you create not only a state of concentration like you're trying to do right here, but also, as you go through the day, how you create different emotions. When you realize, okay, these are the building blocks, if you find that you're building a, an unskillful emotion, you can take it apart and build it with the new blocks. For example, when there's anger, you'll notice that you breathe in a certain way that's irritating. There'll be a tightness in the body, tightness in the stomach, tightness in the chest. And you feel you've got to get it out of your system. But if you simply breathed in a better way, you wouldn't have that sense that you had to get it out, or that you were bottling it up. Then you can look at the way you're talking to yourself about this situation. Why are you focusing on things that make you angry? Part of the mind will say, well, there's something wrong here, something has to be done to change it. What well, can you change it without getting angry? Because the problem with anger is it tends to blind you. But if you can clearly see a situation that's wrong, and you learn how not to be angry about it, then you're in a better position to see what the most effective thing would be to do or to say. And then, of course, there are the perceptions you hold in mind of the situation. What picture are you painting in your mind about the situation? How could you paint that picture in a different way that would be just as true? but wouldn't have to give rise to anger. When you learn how to take apart an unskillful emotion like this, you could also learn how to put together some skillful ones, like goodwill, as we are mentioning this morning. It's a lot easier to feel goodwill for others when you feel good inside. So breathe in a way that feels good. And then talk to yourself about how important it is to have goodwill for everybody, that you're protecting yourself from acting on ill will, 
which would lead to bad karma. And of course, you're protecting the people around you. So remind yourself of these things, that goodwill is for your own good. Remind yourself also what it means to have goodwill, wishing that other people will behave in a skillful way so that they'll be happy. And then you can start thinking, what can I do, what can I say, how can I think in a way that would actually be helpful to those people in that direction. As for the metal fabrication, you can have an image in the mind of goodwill spreading around. And it's not diminished. It's not like butter. When you, the more you spread it around, the thinner, thinner, thinner it gets. It's like the light of candles. You can think of every person holding a candle, and you have your candle is lit, so you light somebody else's, and then they can light somebody else's, and light somebody else's. The fire gets spread around, but it doesn't get darker. It doesn't get dim. In fact, it actually gets brighter the more it's spread. So if you can have goodwill for everybody, it's better than just having goodwill for a few people. You have no ill will for anybody at all. You can live in the world with a greater sense of ease, a greater sense of safety. So it's useful to get to know your mind in terms of those three kinds of fabrication. The way you breathe and how the way you breathe can affect your mood. And then secondly, the way you talk to yourself, the topics you choose to talk about and the things you choose to say. And then third is your perceptions and your feelings. And here the feelings, of course, are related to the way you breathe, but also the way you think. You breathe in such such a way that gives rise to a sense of ease, but it requires some thinking to think of that sense of ease to spread around. You hold an image in the mind of how the feeling of comfort can spread. You might think of energy channels in the body or energy centers in the body. Think of them being wide open, filled with good energy. And by putting things together, through these three kinds of fabrication, you're really changing the state of your mind. And keep that in mind, remember that. So when you're in a bad mood, you can stop and ask yourself, well, how can I change this mood from within? All too often when we're in a bad mood, we look for help outside. We want somebody else to put us in a good mood, or we want to do something outside to put us in a good mood. But if our good mood depends on things outside, we're not safe. You want your good mood to depend on things inside you, skills that you develop inside. And that way you can go everywhere and not be a victim of bad moods, and not be a victim of the kind of karma that you tend to create when you're in a bad mood. So get really familiar with these three kinds of fabrication. Because there you're in a resources, so that no matter how things go in the world outside, you still have resources inside that can create a state of well-being. And a well-being that lasts. 